Hi guys, welcome to today's virtual wild encounter and happy Earth Day. So as you notice, I am wearing a mask and you may have heard recently in the news that non-human mammals can get COVID-19. So here at the zoo, we like to take an extra step of, of precaution and wear a mask, not only for our mammal friends, but also our coworkers. So um, since, uh, since Dan here is not a mammal and he is a reptile, and our moderator is about 10 feet away. I'm gonna go ahead and take my mask off. So, uh, my name is Liz, and uh, today I have Lieutenant Dan, and he is a legless lizard, or a sheltapusik. Now, sheltapusik is a Russian word that means yellow-bellied. Now, these guys are found on every continent except Antarctica and South America. And they're really cool because they have the name glass lizard as well because what they can do is when they feel threatened by a predator, what they're gonna do is break their tail off. So that's where they get that name glass lizard. Now these guys may kind of resemble a snake because they don't have any legs, but a good way to tell the difference is, if I can get Dan out here, is that he actually has external ears and he has eyelids. So if we can get a good close-up of him, you'll be able to see him blinking. Snakes don't have eyelids. There we go. He also doesn't have a forked tongue like a snake. Now one of my favorite features about Lieutenant Dan here is he has a line all the way down his body. And what that does is if he eats a really big meal, what he can do is kind of expand his body to make it a little more room. It's kind of like on Thanksgiving when you eat a big meal and you kind of undo your belt a notch. That's exactly what that is for him. Now you may see all this really cool stuff on the table. It may look like garbage to you, uh, but it's actually enrichment. So these guys, since they don't have legs, spend all of their time on the ground or underground in burrows. So here at the zoo we like to do enrichment for our animals that would kind of uh, make them do a natural behavior. So for Dan, we like to give him different things like mulch and dirt and newspaper and even tubes. As you see, he's coming out of a tube here. And that's just going to let him do some natural behaviors like he would if he was out in the wild. All right, and Dan is about six years old. I know we like to get those questions. So he is still pretty young for a lizard. Now he does shed like a snake. You going to come out, buddy? All right. It's pretty good. Yeah, he is pretty cozy. Um, so, do you have any questions? Well, the best part is he shows off with a lot of hellos and hi, hi, how are you? And we get a lot just as we start. So, uh, Julian, hello from North Mississippi to you and Dan. Oh, hello. We've got Maddie and Abby, also from South Haven. Thanks, guys, for watching. Um, Elise says hi from Hernando. Oh, Hazel and Mommy are ready for viewing. Kelly sent us 50 stars. Thanks, Kelly. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for sending us stars. JJ and Bryce from Forest City, Arkansas. And uh, this might be my favorite. Sarah Jonas says hi from just a few blocks away. Oh, well, hello. You were super close to us. Now, one of my favorite things to talk about with reptiles, especially uh, during the springtime, is a lot of reptiles are coming out of kind of like a hibernation because it's getting out to be warm enough for them to come out. And so if you do see a snake or a lizard out, the best thing you can do is just leave them alone. A lot of snake bites especially happen when people are messing with snakes. And we wouldn't want Lieutenant Dan here to lose his tail or his wild counterparts. Um, so if you just leave them alone, you're not going to frighten them and they're not going to lose that tail. I like watching him slither around and checking out that cool enrichment he's got up there. Yeah, he's really liking this tube. Okay, so we've got Marissa, age 13, wants to know, if I see him in the wild, how can I tell the difference between him and a snake? That, oh, I love that question. So the best thing uh, you could do is just stay pretty far back from any kind of wild animal. Um, so it would be pretty hard to tell if he was a snake, um, unless you were really close. And you wouldn't want to get that close just in case it was a venomous snake. But um, since he is so close to the camera, you may be able to see there's a hole right behind his eye. Oh, no, <laughs> he's going to retreat now. Um, so he has holes on either side, and those are actually external ears. Um, he also has eyelids. Snakes do not have eyelids. So if you see him blinking, that means he's a lizard. We're trying to see which camera is going to see him, but that's kind of right in between there. <laughs> okay, we've got uh, 
Hello from St. Louis from Chloe. Oh, hello. I'm from near St. Louis. I love St. Louis. Go Cards. Well, she wants to know, does he have any teeth? Um, so he does have little teeth. Um, mostly just really powerful jaws. So these guys um, eat a lot of invertebrates like bugs. And a lot of the times these guys in the wild will eat a lot of snails. And that's when that powerful jaw comes in a lot of, like, uh, you know, help. And sometimes we'll even feed them things like small rodents. So they're a help around your house, just like snakes are, because they help keep that rodent population down. And we've got a docent giving us a shout out from the KC Zoo. Hello, Monia. Hello, I love our docents. I miss our docents so much here at the Memphis Zoo. Catherine wants to know, how does Sam procreate? That is a good question. I'm not exactly sure how a legless lizard would. Um, and some of these guys can actually do live birth or eggs. So I'm not exactly sure for this exact species. Really, a live birth, that's cool. We've got Hampton from Conway, Arkansas, and he wants to know how old can they get? That is a good question. I would imagine um, at least their 20s. Now, Lieutenant Dan is six, so he is still pretty young. Now, I saw his little nose trying to burrow into that uh, substrate there. I'm trying to keep him on the table. He loves exploring, so that's why we give him so many different options. Now his enclosure is really thick dirt, and most of the time he will be um, underneath the dirt and we won't even know he's in there. Sometimes he'll poke his little head up and you'll see a little dirt hat. Um, but when we do give him all these different options, it's just, you know, fun for him to feel around. Oh goodness. He is ready to go exploring. <laughs> well now, is this the only uh, legless lizard you've ever worked with, Liz? Yep, yeah, so he is an ambassador. He used to live in the Herpetarium. Um, but I believe we do have one other one that lives uh, on exhibit. But Lieutenant Dan is the only legless lizard that I have worked with. If you talk about maybe his little personality, man, people don't think that a reptile has a personality, but you know, we saw between our two tarantulas, one really wants to explore, and the one we saw this Monday really wanted to stay in one spot. Yeah, so Lieutenant Dan, as you see, is very, um, I feel like he's outgoing. He is willing to explore anything that we put in front of him, especially new enrichment. Um, yeah, I don't know. He's just very energetic, I feel like. When a lot of other lizards kind of like, eh, I'm cool just chilling. <laughs> well, we appreciate that energy, and so do our guests. Uh, Ashley would like to know, it looked a little red on his skin. Is that a natural coloring? Yep, so his, if he ever gets closer to the camera, you'll be able to see he kind of has a pattern down his body, and that's just to help him blend in a little bit better with his environment. And depending on where the specific kind is from, it may look a little bit different. And we got your favorite question. Uh, Kylan, age five, wants to know if he bites. Oh, I knew it was going to be that question. That is my favorite question. So I usually like to say anything with a mouth can bite. Um, but will Lieutenant Dan bite us? No. He only wants to bite his uh, prey or if he was feeling threatened. But here at the zoo, we like to give our animals choice and control. So he wanted to come out today, so he's not feeling threatened and definitely won't bite us. That's just wonderful. Um, Zoe, age eight, what does he eat? Good question, Zoe. So here at the zoo, Lieutenant Dan loves to get bugs. Those are one of his favorites. Um, I believe one day a week we do give him a, a mouse, and he really enjoys that day of the week especially. But normally bugs, like crickets and mealworms and superworms, he really loves. Can he swim? So I don't believe he can. Normally these guys spend most of their time on land um, and swimming would be a little bit difficult since he doesn't have any limbs. That's a good point. Uh, Jamie and Nathan and Miranda age nine, where do they originate from? Originate? So these guys are, like I said, found on every continent except Antarctica and I believe South America. Antarctica because it's just a little too cold for them there. Um, but yeah, you can find these guys everywhere. I don't believe so. And like I said, we like to give our animals choice and control. So he would never be put in a situation where he was, you know, to feel threatened. So he wouldn't need to drop his tail. Now, I believe that tail will grow back. It may just take a little bit, uh, like a little time. But well, we do have some friends here uh, on Twitter who just want to really confirm that they are in fact not looking at a snake. 
you are not looking at a snake. So if he comes back around to the camera, you'd be able to see he has two openings on either side of his head, and those are actually ears. And if he gets close enough and you see him blink, that's also a pretty good indication that he is not a snake. Because when snakes are asleep, they have their eyes wide open, and when they are awake, they have their eyes wide open. So that's another reason you'd want to leave animals out in the wild alone, especially snakes, because you don't know if you're going to wake them up and frighten them. So this kind of continuing on that theme of, you know, snake or lizard, uh, Evan A12 wants to know, uh, if he is a lizard, why does he have legs? So these guys spend pretty much their whole lives on the ground. All of the prey they like to eat is on the ground. And when they aren't out exploring or eating, they're going to be underneath and burrows. So they have a really powerful head. So if you see him over here, sometimes he pushes through the mulch. Um, and he doesn't need legs because he spends all of his life on the ground. I will admit right now, keep I'm like reading questions and people get the camera like, where is he now? He is active. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to keep him on the table. He is just ready to go see <laughs> all kinds of things right now. I really like it. Uh, I knew this one would come eventually. Uh, Sarah wants to ask you, Liz, how did he get his name? Because he does, well, we did not name him. I just want to put that out there. Um, but he is Lieutenant Dan because he doesn't have legs. If you've ever seen Forrest Gump. Okay, uh, Jonah A7 wants to know, how long is he? How long is he? Let's see. I want to say he's about two, two and a half feet. So not very long. Now, is he full grown as long as he's going to get? Or does some other ones get, you know, four feet? I feel like they can get a little bit longer, but I believe Lieutenant Dan is not going to get any longer than he is right now. Okay, let's see. Um, Whitney what, we got Kevin here. What does their body feel like? Is it dry or moist? So it's actually very dry. His body is covered in scales, just like a snake. Um, if their body was moist, they would pick up everything they slithered over, and that would slow them down a whole lot. Um, so it is pretty dry. Uh, I do see some comments here that they can't hear the moderator. I apologize. I'm trying to speak into this mic as close as I can. Um, keep on with those questions here. Grayson, A13, wants to know how old is he? He is six years, nine months. We may want to do that intro. We're getting a lot of questions like that. But let's really do that introduction just one more time. Yep, so this is Dan, and Dan is a legless lizard, not a snake, even though he looks very similar to a snake. Um, we also, uh, they're also known as sheltopusics or glass lizards, uh, because if they feel threatened, what they're going to do is break their tail off, and their tail starts right about here. So almost half their body is tail. That is a good question, Zoe. Um, so our vets actually do that. You actually um, have to kind of go inside their body. So we did not do that, but they did that when he came to the zoo. And you know, just so everyone knows one more time, uh, how do you tell the difference between a lizard and a snake? That is a good question. So let me see if I can get him over here to the camera. Which, which camera are we at? Or on your uh, stage left. <laughs> The one that's staying up the one here. He wants to go to stage right. All right, cool. So, let me try to move him over here. If he goes by, you'll be able to see some openings right behind his ears, his eyes, and those are his ears. And if you can see, you will see him blinking every now and then. Snakes do not have eyelids, and lizards do. So that is one of the main two reasons, uh, ways you can tell the difference. Oh, goodness. I don't know the exact amount of legless lizards, but I know there is a bunch of varieties. And Abby, age 10, um, what are his predators? His predators? So a big one would be birds of prey. So things like hawks and owls. Um, they would come up, fly, grab them with their feet, and fly off. But anything bigger than him would be a really good predator. So even other snakes and lizards. But I feel like birds is going to be a really big one. So there's not really anything you can tell from far away. 
Um, so that's why I say you just want to kind of leave them all alone when you're out in the wild. Um, because if you can tell, you're probably way too close. Um, so these guys, like I said, have the holes behind their uh, eyes. They don't have a forked tongue like a snake either. So that's maybe something you can see kind of from a distance without getting too close. That's a great question. So um, these guys will hang around um, when they lay eggs. They'll make sure nothing is going to attack those eggs, but as soon as they hatch, um, they're kind of on their own. So they're pretty solitary. Okay, oh, here's always a fun one to answer. How do you tell the gender, Zoe age eight? So we let our vets do that. So they are specially trained to find out, um, but it's gonna be an organ inside of their body. I know, he is not the good majority of this enrichment off the table. <laughs> I know, we'll have to post the story later for everyone to look at and see how much stuff is on our floors. Um, Daniel, we need to see your question about enrichment with bigger animals. They do, I don't know if we're getting on camera given um, what's going on with the mammals right now and just some safety protocols, but we'll do our best to show you some in the future. Enrichment's one of my favorite things we do here at the zoo. Um, so I don't know if you can see a lot of the stuff we have up here was like tissue paper and newspaper, and we had paper towel rolls. Um, and so we like to do a lot of recycling here at the zoo, and that's one way we can do it. Um, but enrichment with all of our animals is so much fun, and seeing them interact with the new one especially. Yeah, he definitely seems to really be into that. Was that bark or? Yeah, it's just reptibark. Reptibark, is that? It's um, just specifically for <laughs> reptiles. So you got a baby fetus, man. Okay. They do, just like a snake. Um, so they'll do it a few times a year, and I believe Lieutenant Dan here did just shed not too long ago. Nice. So how often does he get these enrichment activities? So we give our animals new enrichment every day, and it's probably enrichment they've seen before. Sometimes it's novel or new enrichment. Uh, but we like to pretty much give them do new ones every day, so um, they're not always stuck with the same stuff. Kind of like when you're stuck at home right now, and you're trying to find new things to do, maybe puzzles to keep your brain active. Same thing for these guys. They are always trying to find things to keep their brain busy. So we may give them a big fort to go through, a box, ref to bark, um, scrunched up newspaper. Sometimes we even take these guys outside so they can bask in the sun, which is something that they would do naturally in the wild. I mean, he is making me work for it. <laughs> I think we already answered this one, but we're getting a lot of the same questions again uh, about his predators in the wild. Yep, so pretty much anything would eat this, but his main predators are going to be bigger lizards, snakes, but especially birds of prey, kind of like a hawk or an owl. Oh, an owl. We've heard that one before. Uh, Katie would like to know, are they aggressive? So in the wild, they may seem aggressive just because they don't know you, um, and they could be frightened. But Dan here knows us, knows all of his keepers, and we give him choice and control, so he is not aggressive whatsoever. If anything, he's just very curious about what's going on around him. So if he were to get attacked, uh, what would he do to defend himself? Great question. So these guys get their name Glass Lizard um, because what they're going to do is break their tail off, and like a lot of other lizards, what it's going to do is sit there and flop around, and it's going to give him a chance to get away while that predator is distracted by his tail. It will eventually grow back. It just may take a little while. Oh, goodness. I know. I'm just trying to keep up with cameras and questions at the same time. Uh, how many uh, eggs will they grow and how long does it take them to hatch Marina age 9? That is a great question. I am not sure of the exact number of eggs, but I imagine it's going to be kind of a smaller clutch of eggs. And once they do lay their eggs, what they're going to do is hang around to make sure that predators aren't going to mess with it. And once they're sure that predators aren't going to mess with their eggs uh, and they hatch, they're going to hit the road and those uh, new babies are on their own. Okay, so they don't really hang out in some sort of family unit? Mm -mm, they're going to be more solitary. Okay. Eliza, age eight, wants to know if they're good at hiding. Oh, they are excellent at hiding. Sometimes uh, when we come into um, our ambassador animal room, he has buried himself so far under the dirt. You're like, oh my goodness, is he in there? 
So they are excellent hiders, especially since they can burrow underground. So you say they're all over the world. Um, if I were to go, what they call it, herping and want to find one, where would I look? That's a good question. So if it's going to be nice and sunny, you may look on like a rock that the sun is shining on. Um, if it gets a little too hot outside, like the dead of summer, they're going to probably find a more shady place to hide. Um, so anywhere uh, in a brushy area would be a really good place to look. Um, just make sure you're careful and you watch where you're going and you don't really mess with them. You kind of watch from a distance. Oh, he's burrowing. So I, oh, I don't know if you can see that. You can't really move the camera. He's just on the ground. <laughs> so he's kind of coming up now, but what he was doing is using his head as a shovel and kind of pushing through the reptibark. He's excited. You know, it's fun. It's such a fun time to go back to talk about how ears and blinking, if we get that. I thought he was pecking himself out, but apparently he's found his second wind. Yes. Let's see. He really likes the camera. <laughs> so. Well, I'll just move this camera around a little bit. And we'll go get a nice little look at him. Stay on the table, bud. He is very excited. So you may be able to see him blink. Snakes can't do that. And he also has those holes. That was a perfect shot. Right behind his eyes. Those are his ears. Snakes really don't have external ears and they feel vibrations more than anything. Yeah, I like, so when he's licking his tongue like a snake, is he smelling things? Yeah, so he can kind of smell like a snake. It's not as forked as a snake's because theirs is very, you can tell the difference. So he's just kind of sniffing out his environment, seeing if there's any prey around. Now, because he has ears, um, what about smelling? Does he smell this tongue like a snake does, or does he... Um... Yep, so he can smell. He also has, like, little nostrils, but um, the tongue kind of helps him figure out where his prey is going to be. Well, we do have Mia wants to know, uh, does it make a home for himself? Like, I guess that burn, does he have, like, set tunnels he goes back to every day? Oh, he's he... burrowing on earth. Oh, there we go. We can see it. Oh, perfect. We're going to move the camera on. Let me try to... So that's, that's an interesting question, you know, talking about how he burrows to, to find that shelter. Is it the same burrow every night after night, or does he constantly make new homes? Um, so most of the time they're going to go back to the same one. Sometimes they may even steal burrows of other animals that have already made them. Uh, but he can dig very easily, so it wouldn't be too much work for him to actually make another burrow if he needed to. Alright, and we've got some regulars here. Caitlin and Ian are back, and they want to know how many toys does Dan have, and does he live with another luckless lizard, or would he? Um, so no, he lives by himself and he has not really, don't really call them toys, but, um, toys for him are what we call enrichment. And I don't know if you were here at the beginning of the video, but he gets all kinds of things like shredded up newspaper, new substrate, like rep to bark, um, hide. So we can go hide underneath things if you would like. And we switch those up every single day. So he can use his brain, do some thinking, um, new environment for him and he would do some natural behaviors like he would out in the wild. We do have some friends at home, including Adam here, wants to know that slit on his side, is that a cut or is that natural? Nope, that is natural. So if he eats a big meal, what he can do is expand that line, kind of like if you were um, eating a Thanksgiving dinner and you needed to undo your belt a notch, that's exactly what he can do with that. It just expands. Oh, Liz, there's some questions for you. This is a great time to talk about it. Uh, Maddie, age 12, what? What is an ambassador animal? What is an ambassador program? What's an interpreter? Oh my goodness. Thank you for that question. Um, a lot of people don't know about ambassador animals. So an ambassador animal is just an um, kind of like a spokesperson for their species. So uh, Dan here is an ambassador legless lizard. So we bring him out during programs and shows and teach you guys about um, him and his wild counterparts. So he's kind of just a spokesperson um, for the animals out in the wild. And an interpreter is, so here at the zoo, we're kind of just special zookeepers. We get to do all the fun stuff that other zookeepers do, but then we get to do programs like this and do shows and do a lot of other training. Oh, he's loving burrowing right now. <laughs> but where does he live? I mean, you said one lives in a herbarium, so where can I see Dan? So you actually can't see Dan unless we bring him out. He lives in our ambassador animal room. So we have all kinds of snakes and lizards and tarantulas over there. Um, and it's in our education building. So they're separate from all the other animals, um, just so we can bring them out for programs like this. 
And yes, we are getting toward the end of our segment. We'll try to catch all those questions. We apologize, um, but we're going to keep on moving. <laughs> ha! So to continue on that lines discussion, Catherine wants to follow up. Is it like a suitcase you can unzip? <laughs> yeah, kind of like you have that little um, extra zipper so you can put more stuff in your suitcase. Exactly like that. I really like that one a lot. Actually, Catherine, thank you for that. Uh, James, age five, is he an endangered animal? Nope, they are not endangered that I am aware of. So, good question. And Gamer09, uh, we did that intro a little bit ago, but he still wants to know how old is Dan? Dan is six years old and nine months. And we got a friend on Twitter. Let's just get close to our wrap-up time here. But he wants to know, what is that neat creature? He is a sheltopusic or a legless lizard. So, not a snake, even though he looks like one. I know, we, we keep getting that same question over. It's like, so it's not a snake? How is it not a snake if it doesn't have legs? Yeah, he is a trickster, so we used to have a trickster show, and we would definitely bring him out for that show. Um, so he does not have legs, but a good way to tell, like I've said, is he has holes right behind his eyes on either side, and those are actually ears. He can also blink. Snakes do not have eyelids, and Dan here does have eyelids. And I keep waiting when he's still if he's going to blink, so, you know, the other... Yeah, he's pretty quick when he blinks. That's really fun. Um, looks like we've got a couple extra questions here, Liz, and then we'll let Dan go back to his burrowing sun elsewhere. <laughs> uh, Amy wants to know, is he aggressive? So he is not aggressive. Um, we give our animals choice and control here at the zoo. So if Dan would, didn't want to come out today, we wouldn't make him come out. Um, but when I went in to get him, he said, oh, yeah, we're going to go out. So he is... I believe having a great time right now digging around this reptibark. Um, and we also spend a lot of time training and getting to know these guys and reading their body language. Um, so we would know if he wasn't feeling too hot or didn't want to come out. But definitely um, leave animals alone in the wild because the time they do get quote unquote aggressive is when people are messing with them and they're too close and they're actually just kind of frightened. So, so man, that's not a good note here. How can I tell if an animal is threatened by me? Like, especially snakes or a legless lizard or a lizard. What, what are some symptoms? Um, so maybe you're, if you're, too, if you're close enough to tell if a snake has eyelids or not, you're probably too close. And um, at least with snakes, they're going to kind of go in like an S um, with their body, and that's a strike position. Um, but yeah, so just kind of do your research, learn about, um, you know, animal behavior. But it's, it's just individual animals to tell if they're aggressive or not. All right, guys. So I think Dan here wants to go back and dig around in his enclosure. But thanks so much for watching. If you would like to help out um, Dan here and all the other animals we have at the zoo, um, you can go to our website and um, donate to our um, animal emergency fund. Or you can, can become members and um, have all kinds of fun perks once the zoo does finally open back up. Or you can even adopt some animals. So definitely go check out our website. Um, and I can't wait to see you guys again.